For most of the country, schools and universities have switched to remote learning for the rest of the school year. Even before the pandemic shut down schools, there were more than one and a half million homeless students in the U.S., according to the National Center for Homeless Education. Many students relied on school for safety, stability, and even food. How have they been affected by the school closures now so common across the nation? News Hour Weekend's Zachary Green has our report, which is part of our ongoing initiative, Chasing the Dream, Poverty and Opportunity in America. 21-year-old college senior Jamie Waldron didn't always think of herself as homeless. Orphaned at 15 when her mom died, she found shelter with some aunts and, finally, an older cousin. But while she was living on campus at UMass Lowell, he and his wife had a baby, and their two-bedroom house wasn't big enough to accommodate Waldron when school was out of session. And I was, like, not sure where I was going to live. And then I went to a resident director of my building, actually, and he put me in contact with um, one of the deans at my school. During Waldron's sophomore year, that dean helped her get accepted into the Massachusetts Student Housing Security Pilot. It's a state program that funds year-round campus housing and meal plans for a handful of homeless state and community college students. For the time being, Waldron felt secure. She got a job at a local grocery store and even took enough credits that she was on track to graduate a year early this May. But things changed when the coronavirus hit the U.S. and her college campus shut down. And no one was really sure about housing. Even the housing department wasn't sure about housing because they weren't sure if they would have to uh, have everyone leave or not. And so I'm like, I was like emailing people and calling and no one had any answers. In late March, after spring break, UMass Lowell told students who had gone home to remain there for the rest of the school year and take courses online. But Waldron's status allowed her to remain on campus, along with 260 other students with nowhere else to go or whose families lived too far away. But Waldron's troubles are far from over. I now buy more groceries than I ever would have before because I was using my meal plan for the main meals a day. Spending money on food that I didn't plan on spending money on was definitely really hard. Waldron is not alone. A 2019 survey of nearly 167,000 college students by the Hope Center for College, Community, and Justice found that 17% of respondents described themselves as homeless. That's about 28,000 students. And that was before the pandemic closed student housing around the country. Annie Ciraldi is Associate Dean of Students at UMass Lowell. She says the homeless students she's worked with Campus, can only they improvise. They may be couch surfing. Um, they may be living in their cars. So their biggest concerns are, where am I going to shower? Where am I going to do my laundry? Where do I get my food? How am I going to cook food um, if they're not in a secure environment? Ciraldi says that one of the biggest issues currently facing homeless students not living on campus is the loss of everyday resources the college offers. A lot of our students who are homeless will shower at our campus rec center or will do their laundry in a residence hall, or will eat in a dining hall, and all those things don't exist for them anymore. So if you live in your car, you're trying to figure out where is all that going to come from. It isn't just homeless college students losing access to school resources. Across the country, roughly 124,000 public and private elementary and high schools have been shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Of the school districts closed, New York City's is the largest. More than 114,000 of its million students are homeless. One of them is Jamarian Brown, a 14-year-old high school freshman. He's lived with his parents and three younger sisters at this Bronx homeless shelter for four months. Since school closed, it's mostly all he sees. I stay at uh, uh, my unit the whole time. I don't really like, leave out unless I'm going to the store. In order to help homeless students keep up with coursework online, the New York City Department of Education has distributed 16,000 iPads to kids in shelters all over the city. Jamarian and his sisters each received one. But when I spoke with him last month, he said they couldn't use them. Like many shelters throughout the city, theirs does not have Wi-Fi. Are you able to keep up with your assignments at all? Yes, but that's only for the, uh, the packs they gave before school was canceled. All my other work that's on the computers, I can't do it yet. Estrella Montanez is the residence director at Jamarian Shelter, which is part of Bronx Works, one of the largest shelter networks in New York City. When I spoke with her in March, she said many students there had fallen behind due to a lack of connectivity. There was a lot of anxiety around, and what is this going to mean? How is this going to count 
against us. Some of our families were also being sent messages like from teachers that, you know, your children are being marked absent because they're not accessing the online, you know, online assignments. And it's just like there's nothing they could do at that point. Chris Caruso is the executive director for the Office of Community Schools at New York City's Department of Education. He says that online absences won't count against homeless students and that they now have connectivity. We knew it was going to take some time to get the distribution chain and get access to the devices to all the students living in shelter. Uh, and we have since eliminated that digital divide uh, and every student in shelter now has uh, a device. Each of these devices is already equipped with internet access. Uh, so the strength of the signal, uh, the Wi-Fi access point uh, does not matter at all. Literally, you can use these any place, anytime. He says that the city is taking additional measures to make sure that its most vulnerable students don't fall behind. We have 400 meal hubs across the city, and we're giving out 250,000 meals each day. Four million meals have been given out since schools physically closed. Not only can families show up and get grab and go, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but for many of our shelters, we're arranging food transportation so that students and families uh, can get them on site. In an email, Estrella Montanez told NewsHour Weekend most students at her residence, including Jamari and Brown, now have iPads with data plans. But she also says that connectivity is very slow for many and that some iPads had to be replaced because the internet just stopped connecting, and that took about a week or more. In a response to NewsHour Weekend, the city's Department of Education said that they are aware of isolated instances of connectivity challenges in certain shelters. They also said that they are working directly with the Department of Homeless Services, Apple, and T-Mobile to address individual issues as they arise. Meanwhile, back in Lowell, Massachusetts, Associate Dean of Students Annie Ciaraldi says that since UMass Lowell closed shop, at least five additional students have come to her to disclose their homeless status. Thankfully, we have a very caring and giving community at UMass Lowell, and so we work it out somehow all the time. But, you know, my fear is that there are a lot more out there than we know of. I'm, I'm positive of it, and eventually we won't be able to, we won't have the resources to, you know, address all of them.